That's recording. Here we go. Hello, everybody. I'm going to stand up here with my mask off for a little bit. Um, we have a big experiment going today, and you might have already been in classes where you've got kids that can't be with us. And uh, I'm trying to right now uh, do the Google Hangouts thing with them. But I also want to let everybody know, and I want everybody to know who's in the room right now. Um, no, that right now I'm going to call people in on Google Hangouts, but right now I'm also recording on, uh, I'm going to use a YouTube to record because it works a lot easier. Remember yesterday when I recorded, I was trying to do that through classroom. It was not working very well. So today's our first day to uh, record with YouTube and do uh, the Hangouts thing. So we're all getting used to this. Those of you in the classroom, those of you at home, teachers, but I just want to talk to all of you about what I think would be wonderful for you to think about if for some reason you have to attend class from home, okay, or if you have to be at home. Um, I just want to tell you a couple things that I think will be really helpful. And Lainey already heard this in homeroom, but she's going to hear it again. I would make sure that I set uh, that you set your Google classes up so that you receive notifications, okay? Because every time a teacher puts a material or an assignment or posts something in classroom, you guys are responsible for that, all right? And as we get to, you know, there being several people, we don't know how many people are going to have to learn from home. We, it's not feasible for us to email everyone individually all the time. I mean, that's what we're doing now, but you know, students don't want to email seven teachers every day and be receiving emails like that. So know that the best way to keep in touch is to check classroom. Don't be afraid to send an email, but know that if you just get into classroom every day and see what's going on in there, you should be able to stay on top of things with your class, all right? So, it's, well, here's Mr. Wentz. We'll see what he has to say. I'm just kind of telling him expectations if they have to be learning from home to make sure that they need to check in on Google Classroom all the time. Yeah. That's pungent, isn't it? Cool. It is pungent. What you need? I'm just seeing if you need help with uploading. Thank you. No, we, um, Mr. Bomber, we figured it out yesterday. YouTube works the best. And we didn't have that until the end of the day yesterday. Correct. And it's we were pushing it out in the morning and it took all day to, to get on there. Oh yeah. But it's sweet. I, okay. I would use YouTube. So I'm I'm recording myself here and right. it uploaded really slick. And then we've got kids watching from Google Hangouts too. Okay. I don't know if I really have to do both. Sure. What do you think? I don't think you probably have to, either way. Um, yeah. but I know Mr. Heller filmed a thirty minute video yesterday uploaded it to classroom in two minutes. Yeah, through so, YouTube, is it's sweet. But he's not using YouTube. He's just What's filming he on the iPad and up pulling it. And Mine didn't work that way. So Mine I was wondering what way. process people were using because I get different reports from everybody. Yeah. Right are you going to kind of give us some guidance on that? Or are you well, trying I'm to typing up an email right now yeah. about how to, I've got a Battle Creek Public School YouTube account. And I was going to give the password and stuff to that. So maybe we could put all this on there. I don't know what the best way is. You know, we all have our own individual ones, so we can upload them to, we can put the link in Classroom. That's what I was just going to tell my kids who aren't here. Once you upload it to your personal YouTube channel that you use your Gmail account for, then you can get a link off of that and you can put it in Classroom. Or we can tell the kids just to know to, to go to our YouTube channel, because I'm making it public out there. Sure. So, so right now you, you're filming in the YouTube app. I'm filming in the YouTube app and I'm using Hangouts. Okay. I don't know, that's, that's what we're doing. We're doing our best to make sure that everybody has access to what's going on in class, okay? So there's gonna be some learning pains. Yesterday was big pain, all right? Because it took me all day to get those this class's stuff uploaded. But my ninth period, I used YouTube, and like I told Mr. Wentz, it was really sweet. So be an active learner in that you need to go out to look for those links. I'll show you what my YouTube channel looks like. You might just be able to Google my name in YouTube, you know, search my name in YouTube, but every teacher has a personal YouTube channel. And so if they're recording, you shouldn't have to have the link to find the video. You should just be able to go to your channel and see, okay? So, and please also, 
ask each other for help. Okay, I know some of you guys don't really talk to a whole lot of people, but you're gonna have to, all right? You're gonna have to, This, I think this whole uh, learn from home thing is gonna make us all get out of our comfort zones a lot. Did you guys find that in the spring? Did you feel like you had to get out of your comfort zone sometimes? What were some of the things you had to do to get out of your comfort zone in the spring? What assignments did you have that you're like, oh, really, do I have to do this? What type of assignments did you have? Did you ever have to record yourself? Uh, job yeah. Mr. Cooch, you had to record yourself doing something? Was it that bad once you figured it out? No. I told you that I had some of my kids do their best work for me during distance learning because they felt like it could be themselves because they knew that I was the only one watching their video. You know, they didn't have to be their whole school persona self. They could be their real person. You know, so just know that if it happens that you have to be learning from home, it's still doable, okay? But you have to stay on top of things. And I know the people that aren't able to be with us today, I know they're gonna stay on top of things and I'm confident and it's, they're not gonna be missing out, okay? So what the assignment was for today was to make those character traits, the textual evidence from your story, the assignment was to make those into full sentences and we're gonna do like we did yesterday and that we're gonna pull them up on the screen and we're gonna correct them, okay? So what I would like you to do is if I'm looking at somebody else's and making corrections, I want you and your partner to go in and correct yours if you made the same type of mistakes. I'd love for this document to be perfect by the time we get to the end of it, okay? And the best way to be successful in this venture is for you to listen to what I'm telling others and learn from what's going on there. And, and I know you, it's not gonna be perfect. I mean, I, I want you to learn the skill and it's gonna take practice, just like a math problem or a basketball play or football play or something like that. So go ahead and pull up that doc that we all typed on yesterday. That's for, yeah. It's called second, direct, indirect. It should be right, if you go into your recents, it should be right there. Okay, so what you're, you were supposed to do for today was to blend your own words with the text evidence from the story and make a claim that is a complete sentence. And we had some stuff come up in my afternoon class or other classes yesterday that we didn't have to deal with yesterday, so I hope I can teach you a few things here. Okay. Justine, were you gone yesterday? Mm -hmm. No, you were here, I thought so. Yeah. I don't know what made me think that you were gone, but I don't know. Oh, you didn't turn this, your quiz in yesterday. That's why. It, yeah, for some reason it didn't record. I wouldn't worry about it right this second, but it, yeah, it shows up as not turned in. But I, I thought you were here, so anyway, I'm sure you did it. All right, Jackson, I'm gonna start at the bottom because you guys got corrected yesterday, right? <laughs> Let's go down here. We're gonna start with Brianna, 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 tell me which. Is it Brianna or Brianna? I'm Brianna. She's Brianna, correct? Okay, I'm getting there. All right, so. Brianna, Brianna is making some claims, indirect claims about Bill, okay? And she has made some indirect claims about Bill, but what you need to do, Brianna, on all of these is kind of, is to find text evidence to back up your claim, okay? So we'll look at the first one here. Bill is happy with how his current life is and doesn't miss his past life. You can write another sentence there and say, we know this because, and then use text evidence from the story to show how you know it, okay? So that's where the five would come in after your text evidence, you need to use quotation marks there. Okay, so you'll have to fix those up, but listen to see how the other kids do it, and then you can learn and you can get that fixed up, okay? All right, Dylan, Clayton, and Jackson, same thing, okay? You've made your claim. Now you need text evidence to back it up. So Dylan, Clayton, and Jackson say, Bill is rich 
and lives in a nice house, okay? What I would do if I were Dylan Clayton and Jackson, I would start that sentence with, because Bill is a, quote, lawyer who works at a, a nice firm way downtown, okay? We can infer that he is rich and lives in a nice house. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Okay, so you guys need to fix that up you need to go in after we're done with this and go in and find that text evidence to support your claim. Okay, you guys have your claim, but you need the text evidence to support it. Okay, now we are going up. So Brody and Jordan. All right, if you guys could put your real names in there because I don't know your nicknames except for Cliff. You're Cliff, right? All right, that's the only one I know. If you could put your real names in there, that would be awesome, okay? Um, same thing here. We have some indirect Mary, okay? Mary still likes Bill. Do you guys all agree with that? Yeah. Yes. Give me one piece of text evidence that shows Mary still likes Bill. There you go. One other thing. The, the first thing that we found out. Yeah. Oh, uh, when she met Bill, she unconsciously was in her head for a kiss. There you go. Because... When Bill, because when Mary, it's not great. Be, I, it, it'd be okay to start a sentence with because on occasion. Because Mary unconsciously lifted her head to give Bill a kiss, we can infer as a reader that she still has feelings for Bill. So that is how that one can be fixed up. Okay, let's keep going. You guys can take time. To fix these up here. Luke and Theron, indirect Mary. Mary misses Bill. Luke and Theron, how do you know that Mary misses Bill? Okay, you could use that same text evidence to show that Mary misses Bill. Because Mary to man, because Mary married, oh, you guys, you almost have this one here. Put what, what you would have to do here, Mary married a man she thought she loved. Okay, put that in quotation marks because that's right out of the book, right? Okay, put that in quotation marks. Okay, because, yep, and put your quotation marks right next to the M. Take the space out. And leave a space after because, okay? Because Mary married a man she thought she loved, now put a space and put your page number in there. That's five, I believe. There you go. She is unhappy in her relationship. That's really good. Good. You guys just needed the quotation marks and the page number in there. That is exactly how you are supposed to do that. And then you guys are going to have to find text evidence here to go with your claims, okay? You guys can work on that here in just a little bit. Let's keep going up. Oops, I'm gonna have to move this here. Will and Brody, okay? Bill was still young, okay? Bill was still young because he was happy and successful. I put a space in there. You need a space there. Um, I, do you think Bill looked young to everyone, or do you think Bill just looked young to Mary? I, I'm just wondering if you could clarify. Now nah, it's okay, but you know what I'm saying? It's like Mary thinks she, he, he looks young, but the story doesn't really tell us that. We had to infer it, so you're good. Bill was still young because he was happy and successful. Okay, let's look at the second one. Okay, this is, this is a good piece of, is this showing that he's happy and successful? Is that what this quote is for? I think that's to show that he's married. To show that he's married. Okay, so um, what can you, okay, let's, let's, let me ask everybody about this one. Lucille and I would love to have you. I think that statement allows us to infer something about Lucille. What could that statement tell us about Lucille? 
Brody, since that's yours. Um, that she's, I don't know, kind, I guess, or like friendly. You remember that word hospitable from junior high reading or kind and friendly, okay? I would make a claim that has something to do with Lucille being kind and friendly because Bill says the reader can infer that Lucille is kind and friendly. Okay, so you have to have some text evidence in there with that one. Okay, while they're fixing that, we're going to move up to Justine and Emma. All right. <laughs> you know what? You're exactly right. Okay. Yeah, Bill was, okay, this is really weird. You guys can all learn from this one. Justine and Emma, you're almost there on this, okay? When we are at the end of, a, in this case, your comma, there's a couple things we need to change here, okay? And this is something that, believe it, not believe it or not, I'm just not very smart sometimes. One thing you guys have to remember about citations is the page number citation goes directly after the quotation marks. Okay, so if yours aren't set up like that, go ahead and do it. So Bill was still young, so we're going to move the six over to here. There you go, that, that looks better. Yep, Bill was still young, but Mary was not. I would add to this one, comma, because we know this for sure. I would say, but Mary was not, comma, in the eyes of Bill. Because isn't that from the story, right? To Bill, Mary, to, to Bill, Mary looked old. I would just add a little bit to that one, okay? Bill works as a lawyer at a nice firm way downtown. Are these direct now? Are, you, are we in direct? Yeah, okay. So you guys, uh, if you don't have your page numbers right after your quotation marks, make sure you do that. Okay, you can change them now. Hannah and Laney. Hannah and Laney. Oh, this is one from yesterday that came up later in the day. Everybody look at this one. Hannah and Laney's Mary remarried impulsively. Okay, somebody had the question yesterday uh, about this capital letter. Okay, in the text, is it a capital R? Do you guys remember, is that the beginning of a sentence in the text? You're probably gonna have to look. But here, this is important and it's tedious. If a word is capitalized in the text, but it doesn't work within your sentence to be capitalized because it's in the middle of the sentence, you need to change it to lowercase and you need to put a bracket around it. Okay, so Hannah and Laney here, where it says Mary remarried impulsively, just make that a lowercase r here and put a bracket around it. Okay? You guys can do it together. Watch how they're going to do this. It's not the same as yours. Did you change it already? I don't. Yeah, we have a lowercase r. You have a lowercase r. So it probably is lowercase in, it probably is lowercase in. Yeah, it's lowercase in the book. It's not okay, lowercase. then you don't need the bracket. Do you yeah. think I just need it to refresh? Yeah. That's weird. Just. That's, is it real? I mean, I'm not doubting that it's lowercase on yours. But just know that needs to be lowercase. <laughs> Weird. Well, we can't type on it here. So. For some reason, you can't type on it? No, it's not. It's not going to pop it up. That's weird. Okay, so I'm going to fix this because there's a couple things here, all right? Okay, watch this. Got it? Mary remarried impulsively. One other teeny tiny little thing here, and you guys will have the pictures too. Um. Your comma needs to go on the outside. Okay. Okay, does that make sense? And, and, and your quotation marks. Okay, this is something for everybody because you guys probably did this too. Quotation marks have to be right after the word. Make sense? There. Mary remarried impulsively after dumping Bill in Ohio. We got it. Did you figure out why you couldn't type on it? No. No? Okay. 
And Tyler and Jackson, back to the top here. You're looking very, he wanted to say, old. Well, so you've got your, te you got your text evidence there. You just need to make a claim, okay? You might want to say, you can kind of make an inference here too, based on this direct evidence. You could say, Bill was surprised at Mary's appearance because he said something like that. So make sure you make a claim with that one. Go ahead and fix that one up, make a claim. Okay, do all of you as a group need a couple minutes to go through your claims and text evidence and make them perfect? Okay, I'm gonna pause the video here for just